real world apps with Maui and Blazor. Hello, I hope you're doing great today. In a few seconds, we are going to talk about how you can create real world applications with .NET Maui and Blazor. This combination of technologies is one of the best approaches to create high quality enterprise-like applications for both web and mobile simultaneously. And we are going to see a small example on how you can do that. Now, before we continue, please remember to visit fairplaytube.pdiagosterica.com, click the Buy Me A Coffee icon, and select a donation of your preference. This will help us keep the videos and products free for you. Okay, so let's go to the application. In here, we have a small application created in Blazor Web Assembly. If you see, this is the same Fair Play Condos, and basically, it is a condominium administrator. So I can go to the condos menu items, I can add a condominium, right? So I can say something like a condominium too, and I want the manager to be this test user. And the file, I don't know, let's see, let's see that one. And yeah, that's the preview. Uh, it's a little big, I haven't changed like the styling and classes. This is very, very basic layout. So I create it, it shows me the loading panel, right? And then it tells me that the condominium has been created and I see it into the main menu items. Now I can go and do things in the condominium like add amenities, list properties, add properties, add photos, see the photo list, uh, give access to use or see the users with access to that condominium, um, add users to that condominium, I can delete the condominium and this one is a test in here to add tenants but this one I am actually allowing the owners to add their own tenants. Okay, now let's see something else. That was the web part, right? Now, if we go here, you see that in here, what I have is a um, mobile application. This is the application running in the uh, as window as Windows machine in um, in the emulator or in Windows, I'm sorry. And um, this application is actually in .NET Maui. One of the things that you can see is that the layout is the same, and the only thing that is actually changing is the pages content. And we'll see that in a few seconds. And so now you can see that in here, I can, I am logging in with the uh, with the test user or with a user that is not an administrator. And I can do things like add reservation to an amenity, uh, go to the condominium chat, add tenants, and see the tenants list. Now I can go to the chat and I can do things like, hello, there right and it will start adding messages in there now one second and we'll see those messages being sent through signal r
Okay, so let's send a message. So I am going to send a new message from the mobile application and then you will see it being received on a screen. Message sent from mobile app. And you see that in the browser app, we see the message. This was being sent from a uh, single R connection. This is, this is a simple application, but it is, uh, or it has a lot of the basic features that real world applications should have. Now, let's see how we achieve the sharing of the application, how we did this uh, to work and have the same layout in both applications. Okay, so let's go to Visual Studio and let's see how this was implemented. Okay, so in here we have the application code and you see that it has a lot of projects. Now, one of the best practices when you are creating projects is that you separate the responsibility or the concern of your functionality. With cases like .NET MAUI and sharing functionality across multiple platforms, that is more than a best practice and it actually becomes a requirement because there is a lot of code that you might not be able to execute on all of the platforms. Remember that when you are developing .NET MAUI, you are targeting mobile devices. You could be targeting Android, iOS, or Windows, right? And when you are creating Blazor Web Assembly applications, you are targeting browsers supporting Blazor Web Assembly. So in case of Blazor Web Assembly, you need that the code is able to compile and execute functionality in Blazor Web Assembly in the client side. In the case of .NET MAUI, you need that the code can be compiled in the specific platforms and work in those platforms. So you need to do a lot of uh, more adequate project splitting and separate uh, the projects so you can reuse the functionality but still be able to create platform platform a specific functionality when required and to avoid having platform specific functionality in places where that functionality is not supported okay so here are a lot of projects right one of our main projects is this maui placer which is the maui application now you will see that in here we have something interesting. When you create a .NET MAUI application, one of the things that you will usually have is a pages folder. And in here, we don't have any. If we go to the client side or to the client project, which is the Blazor WebAssembly project, you will see that the only thing that it has at the moment is the authentication.racer page and the rest of the pages that we saw in the code they do not exist in there that is because the pages is effectively a separate project that is platform agnostic it doesn't have knowledge of which platform that it is that will be consumed from. 
it's just a Razor class library with the pages. So you hear, you see that here I have the pages, and here I have divided the functionality for the admin role and for the user role. So that's in there, and here we have the theming. Uh, we have it in here, and then in the specific platforms we have the tip to indicate where the pages can be consumed from so you will see that in here in the main.razor for the maui blazer application we have in the router we have these additional assemblies these additional assemblies basically tells all of the assemblies where the router is going to go and look for um, the components that have specific URLs. So this custom based component is a component which is created in the shared UI project. And then we get the assembly because what it requests is the assemblies, right? And then in the Maui Blazor application, we do the same in the app dot razor. Of course, then we need to do things like adding the imports in here and adding the um, platform specific services and the multi platform services. So, the platforms that are shared between or that can be used for in both um, the Maui Blazor application and in the Blazor client and Blazor WebAssembly application, they are registered in um, this class clients initialization which is actually defined in a separate project which is consumed from both the client project and the maui blazor project so you see the program.cs and the maui program.cs they have the platform specifics in there and then they invoke these services dot add multi-platform services to add the services which are going to be shared across all of the platforms to centralize a little bit the code that we can centralize and that is pretty much or the basis for being able to share your layout and pages for both your Maui Blazor application and your Blazor Web Assembly application. And this actually allows you to create very good high quality applications faster and deliver faster because you are pretty much just coding the UI and the functionality once. And then whenever you want, you can customize it or modify certain parts of your application to uh, use the platform specific uh, code. For example, you can add pages in your um, Blazor WebAssembly application and you can add pages in your MAUI um, application that are actually uh, XAML pages, right? And create more um, platform specific um, windows right but if you want to reuse the code and create applications faster this is one of the best ways to do it in dotnet maui especially if you are a web developer that has a lot or current knowledge of um, that has knowledge of html css and of course a little bit of blazor so I recommend you to use this approach. This is really, really good approach. And as you can see, basically my pages are defined in here and I only created them once. This is everything for now. And soon we'll about another video giving you more information of this project and sharing a little bit further the magic of C-Sharp source generators. 
Now, please remember visit fairplaytube.bdicostarica.com, click the Buy Me a Coffee icon, and select a donation of your preference. Have a great day.